Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me channel. Today we'll be looking at GCSE chemistry fuel cells. So last time we were talking a bit about, uh, in terms of chemistry, we were talking a bit about the electrochemical cells and how they work. And now we are going to be talking about fuel cells, which are essentially work similarly to electrochemical cells, but they are specific types of electrochemical cells. So with electrochemical cells, you convert from chemical energy to electrical energy. And when you do that, when you, one of the reactants in that whole reaction in electrochemical cell gets used up, the cell simply stops working and you either have to throw it out or you have to recharge it, which takes time. Now, what if there was a way to continuously run the cell, continuously provide electrical power, electricity, by just adding those fuels uh, constantly? Well, that's exactly what fuel cell is. Fuel cell is more of an open system where you are converting from chemical energy to electric energy, but the twist is that you can continuously add the fuels to keep the cell running efficiently. So, without further ado, let's get started. How does... So... There are many different types of uh, fuel cells, many different types, uh, utilizing many different fuels. And one that we are going to be talking today about is called hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. And that's a very important fuel cell, as I will go over later in this video. But first, let's, um, let's have a look at this picture here and these reactions here, and let's make let's work out how how this whole thing works i mean it's looking pretty complex right now but don't worry i will go through this step by step and you will see exactly how this works so here's our cell and here so the cell consists of few compartments the first compartment is filled with um, hydrogen then the here this compartment is the anode compartment where we have an anode separate and membranes which separated from the other compartments and this is the sort of anode compartment anode has a positive charge and therefore it attracts negatively charged molecules particles here we have an electrolyte compartment where which is filled with an electrolyte oftentimes it's a potassium hydroxide as said here here we have a cathode compartment which is negatively charged and um, therefore it often attracts positively charged particles. So over here the final compartment is where we have oxygen coming in as per hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and we have water leaving which is the final product of this actual reaction which we'll go into now. So how does this work? So we have these compartments and anode and cathode compartments are connected by a wire completing the circuit with a bulb or any other electrical device. So first of all we have hydrogen coming in, H2 coming in and uh, entering the anode compartment which attracts negatively charged particles. Of course hydrogen has slightly positive tendencies so it tends to be attracted to negatively uh, to anode and there, because electrons are negatively charged, they are essentially dropped off at the anode. They are dropped off at the anode and they are pushed through the uh, circuit. And since we start off with lots of electrons here and less electrons here, we essentially have potential difference, a aka voltage. So there we go. So now we got electricity. So hydrogen uh, particles drop off the electrons here and then they carry on through the electrolyte compartment. They are essentially helped by electrolytes and because they are positively uh, charged they are attracted by cathodes. So hydrogen ions, um, essentially protons, are carried over. They are carried over here to the cathode. Meanwhile, meanwhile Electrons that were dropped off at the anode are pushed through the 
electric circuit. And because we have electrolytes here, the whole circuit is completed. So the electrons are pushed through here, which give us the, so the current and they give us a potential difference. But then these electrons need to be dealt with. These electrons need to be dealt with. So here we have oxygen coming in, the second sort of fuel, the, the second part of the fuel in this cell. So oxygen's coming in and it's reacting with the hydrogen ions and receiving those electrons to form water, H2O. And now let's have a look at the reactions here because these reactions show you exactly what's happening. So step one, like I said, here, when we have, that's step one, when we have hydrogen entering the, the cell and entering the anode compartment and dropping off the electrons. So here we have H2 being transformed to two H plus, two hydrogen ions and two electrons being dropped off. Now these electrons travel through here, as I said, while H plus travels through here and they both enter the cathode compartment where they are joined by oxygen. And what happens right here is this reaction. So we have O2, so oxygen, plus four hydrogen ions, plus four H plus, plus four electrons that's been picked up from, from, the, from this part, from cathode. And here we get two H2O. And our overall reaction is two H2, so two hydrogens that come in, plus two oxygen, plus, sorry, plus one oxygen, and that gives us two H2O. So we get uh, two waters for that. So that's the overall reaction, what happens here. But these reactions are crucial to understand what happens in terms of electricity here, and that's how we get our electricity. Now, the first reaction where we are dropping off these electrons, what are we doing? We are dropping off electrons. So we are losing electrons. So that's oxidation here, that's oxidation. Whereas in the second step, we are gaining those electrons. We are receiving those electrons to form water. We are picking them up. So electron gain is reduction, as you probably know. So here we have oxidation and here we have a reduction. So this hydrogen oxygen fuel cell reaction could be essentially termed as a redox reaction. So that's very important to see. That's a pretty interesting fact. And now, so that's basically how this works. That's basically how hydrogen oxygen fuel cell works. This is what fuel cells are. They allow us to consistently run a device rather than having using electrochemical cell batteries where they run out and then you have to recharge them for a long time and then carry on running them. So here we can run things consistently as long as we're chucking in that hydrogen and oxygen. And but why are we uh, focusing on hydrogen oxygen fuel cells as opposed to any other fuel cell that's out there? Well, the thing about hydrogen and oxygen fuel cells is that they are interesting because they could be used in vehicles, right? You can supply a vehicle with um, hydrogen and oxygen and get electrical power that could be used to power the motor in a car and that car can run. And what's so good about it is that our only product in this reaction, our only product, guys, is water. So that makes cars uh, much less polluting. They contribute much less in terms of pollution. Apart from the parts that are used to make this cell, they essentially have no pollution. They do not emit polluting gases. They just emit water, guys. So that's why it's so important. And combined with the... Um, with the ability to constantly supply the fuel to run the car. So that that would be a massive advantage over cars that use a battery. Because cars that, electric cars that use a battery, once they run out of, uh, once the battery runs out, you have to replace it or you have to recharge it. And recharging it takes a while. So that's the problem. Whereas here, you can just add you can just uh, add hydrogen and oxygen and you can carry on running straight off the bat you you don't need to charge anything up providing uh, the cell is big enough and all 
There are a couple technical problems, so that's why it hasn't been implemented fully yet. But this is why such a fuel cell would be interesting, because of how it could be used to combat pollution. So that's pretty good. But of course, there's also technical issues, like I mentioned, but economical issues as well, that these vehicles could end up being really expensive indeed. So this is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate when you guys watch my videos. If you want to stay up to date on more um, math, science, and some biomedical science videos, hit the subscribe button below. Don't be shy. I am going through the GCSE stuff, and I will be going through A-level stuff and some university stuff. If you think this video helped you, uh, give me a thumbs up. Thank you again for watching, and see you next time.